Hello everyone, welcome to Daisy Solves. So coming back from my latest project, which was quite tedious and big, I've been feeling a little bit demotivated but still wanting to do something new and different. After much brainstorming, I finally settled on a project which will be repainting my very first resin micro mini horse model. But before I move on, I would like to thank Star Stable for being today's sponsor. There will be a link at the top of the description box where you can download the game either to your PC or iOS, but more about that later. For now, I'll begin by unboxing my base model. So a few months back, I ordered the resin mare and full pair Omega and Orion from Lunarinari Art. While unboxing them on stream, I was very surprised to find not one, but two extras. One being a micro mini version of Omega, which will be the one I will be repainting today. I obviously really like this girl since I already bought the full scale thing. And by the way, if you'd like to see a video of me painting that big version, then leave a comment down below. Anyways, I am so impressed with all the details managed to get on this tiny model. It's kind of insane, you kind of need a magnifying glass to see all of them. Because this model is 3D printed, there are a few marks around her body which are left from the supports, and I'll have to remove those before I can get to painting, starting with some sandpaper to remove any bits standing out that shouldn't be there. Now to fill in the divots on her body, I'll be using a new product called Liquid Green Stuff. I've seen a bunch of artists on Instagram use this, and it seems like a helpful tool. I apply a small amount to any place that needs filling in, and then I wait about 15 minutes before I can sand away the excess. Prepping is not really my favorite part of customizing, and I think a lot of people will share that opinion. So having some stuff that makes it a little bit easier is always nice. Yeah, this step is so fun. I totally didn't get distracted by my cat being cute. For my first time using liquid green stuff, I did quite like it. It's very handy for small imperfections, and it's also very easy to use compared to a two-part epoxy sculpt, so I'll definitely use this in the future as well. Now I'll be moving over to spraying and painting, and since this model is very small and prone to just slipping out of my hands, I'll be actually hot gluing her to a popsicle stick so I have something to grab onto. Now, I tried my best to eliminate any imperfections on this first stage, but they are bound to show up, especially on this tiny scale. So to help me highlight some of those and to prep the surface, I'm going to give her a spray of this Tamiya surface primer. Now, after spraying, I ran into kind of an unexpected problem. Um, I usually use a pretty fine grit sandpaper to prep my models, which are usually bigger sizes, and I use the same one for this tiny one. And I guess because of scale, I've never noticed before, but the sandpaper actually left scratch marks in the surface. So I had to go in with even more green stuff and had to purchase some polishing sandpaper. So yeah, that was a bit of a hiccup, but I managed to fix it. Once the model was free of scratch marks and other imperfections, I could finally start on the paints, which I'm mixing in a airtight container. This time I'm going for kind of a warm light gray. As per usual, I water out the acrylic paint a fair amount and give the model several layers. And I also cover it while drying to prevent any dust from settling on the surface, which on this scale would be particularly unsightly. So for Christmas this year, Santa actually got me a pretty sweet gift. This is a brush rinser. I've always been a bit lazy when it comes to changing out my paint water, and eventually it always ended up tinting whatever light colored paint I was using on my models. But now I can just drain out the dirty water, which is so handy. And Millie has also claimed it as her personal water dispenser, so I guess it's like dual purpose. 
Anyways, now let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Star Stable. The game lets you ride into an exciting world together with your horse, and along the way you will meet interesting characters, get to solve puzzles, and discover mysteries all on the island of Jorvik. You'll begin by creating your own character, as well as customizing your first horse. Then after you have registered your account, you can download the game either to your computer or iOS device. The game is free to download and play up to level 5, however, if you use the link in my description box, you'll be given 7 days of free Star Rider time plus a free gift so you can unlock even more content. You'll progress in the game, unlocking more of the map and storyline by doing quests and races, and while doing these, you'll also earn your big shillings, which you can spend on new gear for you and your horse. Along the way, you'll meet and get to be part of a community with horse-loving people who you can compete or just hang out with. Right now, Star Stable is back with a special event called the Equestrian Festival. Spanning across four weeks, you and your friends get to engage in some friendly rivalry through competitions and championships. There are two locations for the festival, one in Moorland for free players, and one in your Vic Stables for Star Riders that have gotten a bit further in the game. So go ahead and dress up in your best outfits and get ready to compete, and I hope to see you in the game. Thanks again to Star Stable for sponsoring the video, now back to painting. So after about 4 layers of paint, the color is looking opaque, and next I'm going to spray her with sealant. I usually use Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat for this, which I have come to love. However, for reasons I'll explain later, today I'll be trying out Mr. Super Smooth Clear, so we'll see how this goes. The purpose of applying sealant is both to seal in the paints and make it more durable, but more importantly, it preps the surface and makes the texture nice and uniform, which makes the next step, applying pastels, a whole lot easier and smoother. In the recent years, I've been using pan pastels to color my models. These are high quality, high pigment soft pastels, and I really found them to be the best ones I've tried so far. In the past, I have struggled a whole lot with pastels, which is documented on my channel. It kind of felt completely random whether the horse would turn out or not, which was super frustrating, and I used to absolutely dread this step. Eventually, I came to realize that even if you have really good technique, if you're working with materials that aren't very high quality, then you can't get as far as you can with high quality materials. So eventually, I switched to pan pastels and to Mr. Super Clear as my sealant. And after that, I've been having a much higher success rate when it comes to this step. For this model, I first covered her in a layer of white pastel, then I went in with grey, and I also used lighter shades in the transition areas to smooth it all out. As I've mentioned before, I find that applying a layer of pastel in the same color as your base, then going in with darker shades, really helps with blending it all out and prevents graininess. Now, as you saw, I used a different sealant for this girl. I used Mr. Super Smooth instead of Mr. Super Clear, the reason being that the latter creates a pretty toothy and kind of sandpapery texture on the model, and since this one is so small, I thought that it may kind of interfere and distract from some of the tiny details. Well, after the first layer of pastel, I wasn't really super happy with how they were applying with this new sealant, so I ended up switching to Mr. Super Clear after all. <laughs> For the second layer, I went pretty dark, which I don't usually dare to do, however, I was thinking that if I do too many layers of pastel and sealant, I'll probably end up losing some details on this tiny model, so I was just very meticulous about my application and used a lot of white pastel to blend out any transition areas from light to dark. And after sealing in that layer with MSC, I was pretty surprised to see how smooth that layer turned out. So I mentioned at the start of this video that I've been feeling kind of demotivated, especially after my latest project, which was quite big, and it really did feel like it went on forever, which it kind of did, it really dragged out. Um, but I got a question on Instagram asking me how I find the time and motivation to do the things I do. 
And that kind of made me think back as I've answered a pretty similar question some time ago and my answer then kind of made me realize why I'm so demotivated now and how to get out of it. I said something along the lines of inspiration for me can come from the most random of places, but it never comes when I'm stressed and worried about needing to make something, which is a headspace it's pretty easy to end up with. I often feel like I should always be productive and working on whatever next project there is, but when I'm not feeling motivated or inspired, then I'm kind of just forcing it and usually nothing very good comes out of it. So instead of staying frustrated, I do something else that I want to do and try not to focus on what I have to do. This can be as simple as going on a walk, going for a bike ride, doing something else creative like painting or recently I've picked up bead looming as a hobby and I've been really enjoying it. And once I have managed to kind of set aside the frustration of being demotivated, then ironically, that's when the motivation and inspiration comes, in my experience. And even when an idea pops up, I try my best to not instantly grab it and feel like I have to make it into a project, but instead I kind of sit on it, develop it, and as I start liking it more and more, then usually ideas for how I can make it into a project and maybe even a video comes. It's kind of like a cultivation process. You have to carefully tend to what you're doing and thinking in order to not end up in a massive art block and even then it happens sometimes and that's okay. I hope this all didn't come off too preachy but it has kind of helped me so if you're struggling with the same things then I hope it can help you as well. Anyways, now back to the horse. After about 5 layers of pastel, I'm quite pleased with the base color and now I'll be adding the dapples, which I had to think long and hard about how to add. I first try to use a cut down detailing brush dipped in white pen pastel to create the dapples, but I didn't really like the pattern I created so I ended up erasing that away with a kneaded eraser. After having a slightly closer look at the patterns in which dapples usually come in, I'm going to attempt it again using a slightly different tool this time. Stephanie Baylock on Instagram has these great videos where she shows how to create different effects on model horses using different mediums and techniques. And in one of her videos, she used this paper blending stump to apply white pampa styles to a model. Granted, she was making a varnish roan, but I'm sure it can work for dapples as well. I bought this blending stump for its intended purpose, which is to blend out graphite on paper, but it really did work well to apply the pastels with. During my model horse painting career, I haven't painted that many dapple horses, so getting an organic looking dapple pattern was pretty challenging. Luckily, pastels are a lot more erasable than paints, so I just kept a kneaded eraser handy and kept on applying the dapples until I was happy with it. I was actually so pleased with how the dapples were looking, so I was just going to seal them in with a layer of MSC, but then almost all the dapples disappeared. I kinda knew this would happen, white pastel just tends to fade after it's sealed, so I just have to build it up with several layers. Actually, no wait. Let me in, please! <laughs> so, not to call my cat demanding or anything, but whenever she comes in from being outdoors for any amount of time, she demands to be cuddled on the floor, nowhere else, and if her demands are not met, she will meow and scratch my curtains and make a ruckus, so I just have to comply. Will you let me do voiceovers? Peace! Stop! Stop! Hey! Once the cuddle session was complete, I went back to my model and started to apply white pastels to make the dapples more opaque.
Even though I want the dapples to stand out a bit more, I'm going to stop with the pastels for now and move on to acrylic paints. So I feel like the last custom I did, which I made a video about if you want to watch it, kind of was a turning point for me when it comes to using paints. On the customs I did before my latest one, I usually just added the base color with pastel and then brought out a few details with paints like the eyes, mane, tail, and hooves. But with my latest custom, which was a light gray, there wasn't too much going on with the pastels, so I spent a lot of time on this stage with the paints, adding lots of details and a lot of highlights and lowlights. And it totally... oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I guess I'm taking a break then to let Millie utilize her private water dispenser. As I was saying, Really taking my time with this step and adding a lot more details with paints has paid off so massively. You know, sometimes it can kind of feel like I'm stagnating with my art and not moving forward, but when I did this step in particular and added time into it, I felt like I made a massive leap. So on this model, I highlight all of the lighter areas, even though I've already gone over them with pastel, I want to just accentuate what I've already done. And same with the crevices, I also want to accentuate those with darker paints to make the model feel more 3D. Also, who needs a paint palette when you have a thumb, right? <laughs> it was getting late and I thought I was pretty much done with the paints, but when I got back to it the next morning, I saw a bunch of things I needed to improve on. Isn't that typical? But once those things are touched up, I can actually call myself done with the base color and I really like it. And although I think she could look nice as a solid dapple gray, I wanted to add some Tobiano markings to her as it's not something I usually do and I wanted to do something different, so markings it is. To be honest, working on such a small scale has been kind of freeing in a way. When I work on my bigger scale horses, which is what I usually do, there's a bit more pressure to get every single detail just right. But because of this teeny tiny scale, I can't really achieve details in the same way, though I try, but it has helped me kind of focus on the bigger picture of the whole horse instead, and I actually really liked it. For the markings, I mixed up white with the tiniest amount of brown, black, and red. I was worrying a bit about the markings looking very bright and kind of like they're very much painted on top of the base color, if you know what I mean. So I try to combat this by making the paint off-white and also by doing it in several layers and watering out the paint a fair amount. And of course, I had to give her a cute pink snoot. I decided to go with a black mane with a few lighter highlights, and I thought especially the dark towards her white face is a nice contrast. While I was painting, I was having a bit of trouble telling where the mane ends started and stopped, but then I remember I have a scaled up version I can easily reference. I use the full spectrum from white to black to paint the mane, and again, I really can't stress enough the importance of highlights and lowlights. They genuinely do make a huge difference. So where the mane goes in, I add black, and where it stands out, I add light gray or white. Oh, uh, Millie, are we having a cat interruption counter at this point? After quite a bit of work, I am pretty happy with how the mane turned out, so I'm going to apply the same techniques to the tail. Now to remove her off her base, I just applied a little bit of heat to the popsicle stick and she popped right off. Time has come to paint those tiny hooves. Another question I was asked is how I mix colors so perfectly, 
which I don't think I do, but I do think I have gotten a bit better at it. I guess my best tip when it comes to painting model horses in specific is to find yourself one brown paint that you really like. I personally use the shade Raw Umber. And beyond that, I really just use reds, yellows, blacks, and whites, and mix that into the colors I desire. When using pastels, I don't mix up colors as much, but I do make sure to purchase a wide spectrum of colors and hues. Previously, when painting horses in any type of brown shade, whether it be a buckskin or a bay, I usually went with a base of burnt umber and white, and then I had a pastel kit with very similar warm shades, so I found that most of my repaints ended up looking quite similar. So when I decided to get pan pastels, I made sure to purchase them individually so I could have several shades of the same color. And if you're interested in knowing what pastels I use for a specific project, you can always check the description box, I always list all of my materials there, so check that out. Anyways, now that I am nearing the finish line, I am going to sign my work using this extra fine tip pen. I'm then gluing her back onto the pop school stick using hot glue, making sure that the sides of the hooves are not covered. Then as a finishing touch, I'm adding some white pastel around the perimeter of the markings to kind of give the illusion of sparse hair. I gave her two finishing layers of Mr. Super Clear. I then removed her from the popsicle stick and glossed up her eyes, nose, and hooves. And with that, my very first micro mini custom horse is finished. I decided to name her Lacey, as she reminded me of another certain dapple grey Tobiano pony who was owned by someone very special. I actually really enjoyed doing this project, and frustration was kept at a all-time low during this, which is great. I also enjoyed doing a slightly different style of voiceovers for this video. I felt like I did ramble a bit, but I was getting kind of sick of the format where I just tell you exactly what I'm doing because I do a lot of the same stuff. I very much want to hear you guys' thoughts on this format, so please do leave those down below. And also, if you do like it, then please feel free to comment any questions, themes, or discussions you want me to talk about in the next video. Remember, you can get 7 days of free Star Rider and a free gift by downloading Star Stable by using my link down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!